Hey guys, this is Brian from PMB Homesteading. Got a little break in the rain out here, so I thought I'd do a little video on the deck, maybe get you a, a yard walk. So let's try and get the move on before the rain comes back. There's all of our kales on the deck. You can see it's been raining, so no need to water because we're right over the overhang here. So it drops down and gives it a nice little drink of water. As you can see, it's doing really well. Paul and I have been eating on this. She thinned out a little heavy down there. So it's a little thin, but uh, the stuff out here on the front's doing really well. We need to give a little bit more water back there. And you can see the shade cloth got whipped around. We had some pretty good winds last night. But uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. Look at that. I mean, look at all the, the seed heads on this arugula. Those are all free. That means we're going to have another, you know, another, geez, I don't know, week, two weeks. Those peats, pods should be ready to drop, and I can start reseeding this bed. And this looks pretty good. A lot more going to seed. Stuff on the edge here. Got to pick some of this out because it got burned the week before. And Paula's just been coming through and just picking whatever she wants for you know the big greens to put into our meals. There's some more kale. You can see the spinach is starting to bolt now. So this is where I was talking about in the indoor video that I'm starting the chives because we have a bunch of onions here in the various areas. We're going to cut this off, leave the roots, and then we're going to plant the chives right into that. Just dig a little hole and put them in. So we're going to keep eating this though as much as we can this week because once this hot weather hits this next weekend it's going to just bolt like crazy and it won't be worth a darn because it'll get bitter. You can see this uh, white Russian kale looking really good. We eat on this as well as the others. So. That's one of the things that we have as a staple for our diet. Oh, and then yeah, you know this this you can see the the regrowth since we put in this shade cloth. The little birds haven't been getting in here and getting a hold of this. There still is some you know the rot in some of these. Oh, look at that! There we go. Got some bugs there. All right, I think it's some insecticidal soap out. Look at that! Boy, that one was just hammered. I'm gonna get this guy out of here. Yeah, definitely don't want to leave that. I can't tell if those have been... If those are eggs that are dead. Because the parasitic wasps got them. That'd be pretty interesting for you guys to, to note. I'm going to try looking that up. I'll just toss this down here in the undergrowth. And if they are parasitic wasp infected uh, larva or eggs, and we'll uh, we'll find out soon enough. You can see there's still a bunch of them down in there, so I'm gonna have to get in here and do some do some tending. I haven't kept up on uh, looking at this kale too often, but now that I'm seeing that, there's quite a bit of it in here. So we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do with that. But you can see over here, chard looks okay. There's still some mealy kind of leaves out here on the edge. Back there, there's some new growth, so maybe it'll clean up with the summer heat. Yeah, that's this spinach over here we've been eating quite a bit off of. Looks like it's ready to just, to just go to go to Bolton, Michael Bolton Town. <laughs> For you uh, older guys like us, you'll know the reference. Younger guys, you'll be like Michael Bolton. Who the heck's that guy? <laughs> uh, the uh, the cilantro is looking pretty good, and the uh, parsley. Actually, I think this is the parsley stuff. Let's see. Yeah, that's the parsley. I think the cilantro was the ones I put in the top up here, and they get kind of... This one here got a little dried out. This one seems to be bouncing back, though. The little bees seem to like this uh, flower head, so we're just letting these go, kind of hang here. We did get our first harvest of squash out in the garden uh, yesterday, and we uh, took all the squash that was ready. We ended up getting, I think, eight. We had uh, th four of the zucchini, and no, we had three big zucchini that were 12 inches or more, and we had a bunch of the little yellow uh, Success PM squash. And so Paula took those and she uh, put them in the oven and roasted those. And put a little uh, mozzarella cheese on top. Got a nice crust on top, and it was really good. As you can see, there's no more squash down on a lot of these. So I came through and took some 
But there's some more that are gonna be ready this next weekend. I love eating them when they're that size. Oh, they're so tender and soft. You can see the peas are really, really coming along here. Oh, and yes, I did remember take off the extra footage of the video camera from last week. So I should be able to walk around today without it shutting off. <laughs> oh, the battle of the peach. Now you can see the, uh, the spraying that I've been doing with the compost tea, as well as the neem oil, has pretty much killed off all the, uh, the fungal leaves. And so they're dropping off and dying. And so now we just gotta get the regrowth of the good leaves. And so there's still some you know, there's still a few, you know, showing on here that look like it's still active. But, you know, I beat it back pretty good to where it's not as bad as it was. As long as we, you know, as well as the other peach trees up there. The one in the front, I'm actually surprised. I actually uh, went out there and took a look at it yesterday. And it's, uh, it's coming along. I think it's going to survive. So we may not have to get rid of that peach in the front. But next year, it's definitely going to be the dormant oil spray along with the neem oil and the compost tea starting early and often so we can actually hopefully get some food out there here's a little bit of, I mean, this is one of the trees that i grafted this year it's a liberty apple the graft over here took you can see and this is the liberty apple this is part of the rootstock i went ahead and let it grow just in case this graft didn't take so i'll be able to save the rootstock and then i'm going to do another graft of rootstock with a Liberty Apple on top of this one here that I tried last year, which uh, didn't take, and I was using one of my tools, so I think I'm just actually gonna get a grafting knife and do a proper graft, because that tool, it seems to really squish the, uh, the cambium, and I don't know if it's making good contact on those bigger grafts like that. For the smaller ones, it seemed to work okay, but uh, I think it went ahead and squished that cambium, and then I tried to get the, the matching up layer, and I don't think it took, so that's the only problem with those. Fig's doing really well. This is a turkey, brown turkey fig. I had to put a stick in there, bamboo, to kind of prop him up. He wanted to lean over. And... He's looking really good and healthy. I put some bush beans in there too, just like last year. Give him a little nitrogen boost, as well as a nice harvest of beans. We've got some more squash there. You can see the peas are really, you know, coming in. Back on that. You can see there's the uh, scarlet runner beans back there. They've all come up. They're ready to start climbing. I've been kind of pushing them back to guide them that way. I don't want them to climb up the tomato cage too much. But those should be nice. They're going to be a nice focal point coming over the top of this trellis. These little bean hutches. Okay, there's the apples. This is our golden delicious. So there's some apples down in here. Some down there on the bottom. I let those ones stay on here from the lower limbs. The upper part of the tree seems to be getting pretty strong. So hopefully we'll get this nice top going here and it's going to curve back that direction. The currents are starting to turn on some of these. Oh, I got to show you guys the, uh, the tomatoes. I don't think anybody in Oregon yet has tomatoes that are ripe. And I've got some that are turning. And I'm betting by next weekend, those guys are going to be ready to eat. There's another one up here. Look at that. That's pretty exciting. That's the one that we started indoors, so that's why it's a little bit ahead of all the rest of the tomatoes. But you can tell, I mean, tomato plants are just really kicking butt. There's some more peas. You know, these things are so good. I think the dogs have a sixth sense. As soon as I start to eat these things, they come out and they start harassing me. You see the apples? Nice and healthy on this columnar apple. Still pretty solid. Doesn't seem like it's leaning. So let's wait and see when it gets a little bit bigger. Raspberries down here are looking pretty healthy. Don't see any uh, raspberry fruit on this one yet. We are starting to get some uh, of the snowy white eggplants forming. One right back there. You can see it on the bottom. It's exciting to see. And the little patty pans. They're starting to turn yellow. There's another bigger one there. I 
Let's see, where can we go next? Here, show you these squash. We've got quite a few forming on this. I harvested one off this plant last night, as well as I believe this one. Somewhere down in there. The tomatoes are doing really well. Oh, and we did put the, uh, the sunflowers. I'll show you the sunflowers we used to have in the grow tent. These are the wildflower ones. You can see they've gotten quite a bit bigger being out here in these pots. So I put a bunch of these in pots here for Paula, right next to her uh, vining rose bush, along with our new little windmill decorative yard art. And then there's the, uh, the rest of the pots there. And we did put some up on the hillside around where the variegated wood howl is up here, so that'll be a focal point of color. And I don't know if last week, because last week this got shut off as part of the video update. But uh, this is our new little you know, trellis that I put in. It's one of our A-frame trellises that's going to probably end up living here permanently. And you can see there's the peas and the beans that have been planted. And they're all popping up. So we're going to have peas and beans intermixed on this, and as well as I did plant some uh, nasturtium in there that'll vine up and go crisscross across here for color. It has a nice uh, orange flower. And you can eat the flowers and you can eat the uh, the leaves, which we take and we cut those and put them in our salads. So that'll be good because we can take the peas and the nasturtium leaves and throw those right into our salads. And that's one of that's our sage. Paul uses that for cooking. And then we have the oregano on the other end down there. So I kind of made this in like a little miniature garden in itself right here. Of course, you know, we have our little friends, the moles, that like to come through here and turn this into a hilly land. I don't mind the moles. As long as they stay away from my, my beans and peas. <laughs> if they get too, too rampant, let me get the castor oil out and hose down the clover. They won't want to come through there for a while. Just in case you guys didn't know, that was a, a trick you can use that Grandma taught me out on the farm. You want to keep the moles away, you, you sour up the soil with a little castor oil. There's the, uh, the other little part there with the sunflowers. And of course we have the peas going pretty crazy up there along with the tomatoes. They're doing pretty well. I think our neighbors have company again, so I don't really want to walk up there. I think it's their mother-in-law and mother -in -law family type people. I don't want the neighbors to think I'm a nut out there with a camera. Oh heck, who cares? <laughs> this is for entertainment for you guys. Who cares about what they think about me? I can show you the, uh, the goji berry bush. This is really taking off. And we're gonna have a lot coming off of this bush this year. As well as this one over here, it's really gotten big. And you can see all the new growth on top. We're going to get a lot of gojis. I mean, last year we had four quart bags. And we just finished those off, you know, about a month ago. There's wildflowers. There's the comfrey. That's your chop and drop nutrient. Now here's the new little island. So I moved the uh, surviving variegated wagala into a little, little mass in the center. Built this little cage around so the dogs can't get in there and knock them around. And then, you know, I don't mind if the dogs come and piddle around the sunflowers. That's okay. But I think that'll be a really nice little focal point of sunflowers all the way around that. And they'll get to be about this tall. That'll look pretty cool. And there's the Liberty Apple. If you guys want one apple tree for your yard, I would highly recommend a Liberty Apple. They have a really sweet taste. Not too sweet, it's more of a dry sweet. It's a really hardy tree. I've never had any, you know, kind of problems with this tree at all. And you get abundance of apples. And they have this nice little pink, pink green. They're not like a pink lady, but they're, they're a distinctive apple. They're not as shiny as a, a pink lady with that really sweet taste. They make a really good cider apple, I think. Let's see. Oh, this is one of the reasons why I like to have these field peas. They start to bloom. They got a really, really nice purplish white color. Really attract the bees. So this will look really nice in the next week. And we got our buckwheat along with our uh, lingonberries in there to help really 
drive up the nutrients in the soil. We got our tomatoes. Oh, and the, the beans are up. I guess I can show you guys that. So there's all the, the bush beans. They're all coming up. Over there, here. This is buckwheat. There's the two squash replacements. They're doing really well. And here's some of the marigolds. I took marigolds and put them in here on the ends. That's those uh, dark orange marigolds. I really got to trim back this uh, salmon berry because it's getting nuts. And after it gets to a certain point, the thorns start coming out. And these won't be fun to walk past once you uh, have the thorns on them. Oh, and then I put the sunflowers in between each of the tomato cages. So that's going to be a nice little backdrop because these are the taller ones. They're seven footers. So they'll grow up in between these tomato cages and be kind of hanging over the top. Yeah, they're all really nice. Threw a little sluggo around them just to make sure the slugs don't take them away from me. You can see the tomatoes are really starting to come in. These are the bigger ones. I like seeing that. Let's fix this guy. Come on, buddy. Get up here. You have to climb. We got our tomatoes over here. They're looking really healthy. Nice green. Really doing well. There's our scarlet runner beans. You can see the bush beans. They're starting to come in down here. Intermixed in with the buckwheat. So we've got our nutrient drop from the buckwheat as well as the nitrogen fixation from the legume of the bush beans as well as the scarlet runner beans going to really dump into this box and help these tomatoes out this year. I wanted to see if this is going to help with the yellowing I had last year because this box was pretty hot. Not hot as in compost hot but hot with you know the weather when the sun really hits it in the afternoon. That's one of the reasons why I put the comfrey along here and I'm going to let it grow because I did a chop and drop and I won't be taking any more of that out so I can let it be a shade shade area on that box to cut down on the heat it retains. But everything looks good in it. Not seeing any problems. There's another apple tree. This is a Granny Smith. Got some nice apples on there. Got a little bit of scab on that one there, but that's okay. You just cut that out and eat around it. Don't see any more honeyberries. There's lots of the little gooseberries. Paul has been coming through in here and picking some of them. Yeah, there's a bunch down there. You can see those nice and healthy this year. Especially since I put in the, uh, the water system, the overhead water system here throughout the yard. It's really made an improvement. Oh, look at that. The colors starting to come in on those apples. Oh, man. That is so cool. It's so cool to be able to see this stuff uh, really take off. You can see my spaghetti squash is really going good. I mean, look at that. It's just vining like crazy. There's a total of, I think, five or six plants in here. Each one of those is going to produce, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get at least, you know, ten of those. Because we love it. Paul makes this really good uh, lasagna replacement with the uh, spaghetti squash. So instead of using the pasta noodles, you use layers of the spaghetti squash. And it's the... Uh, <laughs> it's the one that our son, he, he doesn't particularly care for it. He thinks that he's going to be getting a lasagna dinner with a lot of carbs and a lot of the, uh, the noodles. <laughs> he takes a bite. He used to get mad when he was a kid because he'd think, oh, what is this? Oh, it's all vegetables. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, there's still turkey meat in it. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> all right. Well, this has been a little bit of a yard tour. Let me show you an upper look here. So we'll start to see a lot more color once the... Uh, the sunflowers and everything and the marigolds really start to pop in the yard and you already have the wildflowers down there going but uh yeah this yard's starting to come along for the 2018 uh, season all right i'll talk to you guys again bye hey guys i'm back again for the backyard shots i realized that i had forgot to show you guys down below the uh the new sunflower plantings the grapes I also wanted to show you guys some of the wildflowers. Here's the uh, 
Yawa apple tree. You can see it's doing really well. A lot of nice color on those apples. You can see the uh, wildflowers down there. Some of them fell over because of the rain. Some of these really big tall ones. Look at that. They're going to have a nice flower head. Down in there, you can see a lot of them got, like, fell over because of the rain. That's okay. You also see that down here there's a uh, our currants. They seem to be doing pretty good even though the wildflowers are really jumping on top of them. They're still getting light. So that's great to see. We've got some more variegated wagala down there so that'll really take off. Get a nice bang of color in the spring there. There's some more of my currants. Got currants there. There's some more currants over here somewhere. I don't know where they went. I just have to look for those little cages. There's one there. Should be another one over here somewhere. There's one over here. And there's some. Let's move this country out of the way. Looking good. Alright, let's go up here and look at the uh, grapes and the. There's our almond tree. Lots of almonds on this one. Can't wait to get those. They have that vanilla -y taste. So here's our grapes that we just planted this year. They're vining up nicely. There's another one of the overhead watering systems that I put in that's really helped out this area. But anyway, here's the sunflowers I put in yesterday. All through here I put five on each. And those are going to be a nice backdrop coming up and I'll let them just kind of lean against these cables I have. I'm using those for the kiwi as well as you can see the grapes have already latched on and they're starting to head that direction as well. There's another kiwi, that's the female kiwi, that's the one that actually produces fruit. This is the male. And look at the look at the pine on that thing. That's getting thick. And that's nice. And it's heading that direction, as well as that direction. So that's gonna be good. Good pollinator. So that means we're gonna have uh, plantable kiwis. And it's those little tiny little mini kiwis. They're about that big. They're kinda like a little miniature watermelon. But uh, there's the sunflowers. You can see our strawberries are starting to ripen. We need to come down here and do some more picking this week. We need to thin out those ferns though. They're getting really uh, crazy. One bonus is if you're my neighbor, next year you're going to have strawberries coming through with the runners. So get free strawberries. So maybe you too could be a neighbor. Wouldn't you like to be my neighbor? <laughs> in case you guys remember Mr. Rogers. I grew up with him in the 70s. Come on, guys. I'm old. <laughs> yep, there's some of the wildflowers. Those look really nice. And look at this. This color is just going to pop on this stuff. God, I love it. There's some more there. It's really taken off. This next week should really be great for this. You can see that variegated wagala is doing really good over here. Man, that stuff is just taking off. That's the stuff I did from cuttings last year over here in the uh, plant propagation bed. You can see the clover over here is doing really nice. I got another currant bush down there. Got some mint. You can see the little bumblebees are going after the comfrey. Got its own little ecosystem here. Got some sea berries there. And I got some Rosa Ragusa popping up there next to that bush. I think I'm going to have to thin him out. I kind of eliminated the Rosa Ragusa in here. But it keeps coming up, so I just do a chop and drop on it. I don't mind. It gives me something to do. And now of all the, the blueberries that we got from the grandma's blueberry bush, these look like the only four that are actually still holding on. Because blueberries are notoriously hard to actually propagate from their own cuttings. I know a lot of people say that you can take cuttings and then you graft them onto uh, huckleberry rootstock. And I think that's what most professional nurseries do because it has a little bit easier time of, you know, rooting because you're using a bush that's naturally more prone to root with rooting hormone than blueberries. So we'll see if, the, uh, if they survive because uh, the house where I got those down in Astoria, Oregon this year, it just sold. That was my grandmother's house. And uh, they just sold it, so I won't be able to go down there and get any more. So if they don't last or they don't survive, that'll be the, uh, the end of that. But that's okay. I mean, that's part of gardening. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And uh, 
that's the way it goes. All right. Well, this has been Brian from PMB Homesteading. Talk to you guys again. Bye.